In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins. You came to gather all the nations into the peace of your Father's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You grant pardon and peace to sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us in glory at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, in the abasement of your Son, you have raised up a fallen world. Fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking to me say, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, 
an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given to him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hand? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Our scriptures today present us with two challenges to faith. The first challenge comes in our reading from the prophecy of Ezekiel. God sends the prophet to a people who seriously wonder whether or not God cares about them anymore. Past times were times of blessing, but now the chosen people live far, far away in exile Their city, their temple have been destroyed, and God seems not to care. But God never stops caring about us, though we may falter in how we care about him. All three of our readings today tell us that although God shows his loving care in many different ways, more often than not, he reveals that loving care through people. Who are the people whom God sends to us? 
We are, are, and are we willing to accept them? In the reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark, Jesus comes home to Nazareth, but many people there will not accept his message or his ministry because they know him only as the, the carpenter's kid who grew up down the street. And in our letter, in our reading from the letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul has a difficult time accepting his own ministry because he knows how weak is his faith, yet the Lord assures him of his abiding love. So how do these readings challenge us today, especially on this weekend when we celebrate the blessing of our American independence? Well, truth be told, in light of the pandemic, which seems to be abating here, but which still takes hundreds, if not thousands, of lives each day all around the world, in light of the injustice and other social ills, which on some days seem insurmountable, we need to renew our faith. God still cares for us, his children. And more often than not, God shows his loving care through other people, whether they be ordinary looking people who live down the street or even people weak in faith like you, like me. God's power is made perfect by means of our human weakness. He revealed that power in the weakness of the cross, and he continues to reveal that power as the Holy Spirit comes and changes a weak wafer of bread into the very body of Christ. As we go up to the altar today, let us acknowledge, let us give thanks, that in the midst of all that seems to be going wrong all around us, that God still cares, that God always will care, and that God reveals his loving care through weak people like you, like me, if we would but open our hearts to him. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ was rejected as a prophet when he preached in his hometown of Nazareth. We ask the Lord in his name to sustain all believers in their proclamation of the gospel. For the leaders of the church, may they proclaim the gospel to all the earth despite obstacles, disbelief, and persecution. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in government, may they be guided by God's grace to serve the people with humility, integrity, and dedication. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness to life within the sacrament of marriage and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our Sunday TV Mass community, 
we remember and especially pray for our friends and benefactors who generously help make this ministry possible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, may the gospel be in our hearts and on our lips that we may worthily proclaim your holy name. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, so that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Before I give you the blessing, just a wish that you have a very peaceful and faith-filled Fourth of July. And now may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly to help support the TV Mass from the Basilica. Call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica tv mass. The B-52, it, it's really a, a magnificent beast. The movements, the lights, it's something that sticks with you. When I was a kid, I was really inspired by the combat service of my father. When the opportunity arose as a B-52 pilot to go overseas, I, I put my name in the hat as quickly as I could. My grandfather had joined the Knights of Columbus during World War II, and freshman year, I really felt called to join. While I was deployed to Qatar, I also noticed that there was a great number of care packages that were going unused. I had the opportunity to work with deployed Knights of Columbus, and we took that off base to help the hundreds of thousands of migrants in Qatar. I think today more than ever, we need men that are dedicated to charity, unity, fraternity, and patriotism. And I'm proud to be a Knight of Columbus.